My name's Matt, and this is a banana. <laughs> so, so exactly how hot does the belly pan get? Oh, we're not doing this again, are we? Ugh. Let's see if his testing actually makes any sense. Uh, before I do anything, because I just saw, I just saw the thumbnail, and it's a belly pan. I can see this thermometer. So. Uh, you would have to do it on a warm day, so make sure to to know the the extreme. You'd either artificially warm up something, or do it on like a thirty degree day. You then have to have it sat there ticking over for a good say ten fifteen minutes, and then wait ten minutes after that, and then record your temperature. The other problem he's got is immersivity. Which is how much it reflects. Because that gun looks at infrared. So it's got to... You've got to have a, a black... Pretty much a black surface is the best thing to have. But it depends. So we'll see what he does. It's fine if he does some little gay little test. It doesn't really work out properly. It, it, all, what matters? What matters about testing is not the test so much. It's what... You believe you've drawn the conclusion from. For instance, people used to think that trees used to eat soil, right? And it's like, well, you put a seed in the thing and the tree grows, so it eats soil. It extracts nutrients from the soil, which constitutes some of the soil. And the way that a bloke got around this was... A very simple experiment. It just took a long time. He got a barrel, a, a wine, you know, a keg, like a, a, a whiskey keg or something, cut it in half and weighed that with the soil in and a, like a, a sap, you know, like a, an acorn, just say. And then he planted it. And then after 30 years of watering it, watching this tree grow out of this barrel, at the end of it, he weighed it again. And basically there was no difference. And then he realised that, from doing that, or maybe he had a hypothesis, I'm not sure, but basically he could prove that from that experiment that the tree is taking, it must be taking in the water, it must be taking in the air, it must be taking in, they die without sunlight, so it's doing something with sunlight, but it's not eating soil. Like, the 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 amount of soil hasn't changed but even if it had it hasn't grown this way to because you pull out the tree shake all the dirt and have just roots and tree and you can weigh chop it up weigh that and go where the fuck has all this come from um the other thing it was the same thing when they were trying to they used to think that the heart used to live off blood right <laughs> that you, you, your blood has to be replenished and your heart eats blood right it, it absorbs the blood as it pumps it through it's like a filter feeder and then someone some guy worked out quite simply that the amount of beats per minute and how much blood you could actually have in a pig heart the amount of blood you would need to sustain that heart is where well, it could fill a fucking room in a day so obviously that's not what's happening you know stuff like that but it, it, it's all about the conclusions that you make from your test and not just your test your test can be crude it's just the conclusions you make. Right, watch out. <clears throat> okay, welcome back. Right, first of all, apologies for the daft voice. This is a result of uh, four days cold um, and not very much sleep. So uh, I'm apologizing for this now because this probably sounds rubbish, but. I've got no choice because it's, it's healing slowly. Uh, I lost my voice completely two days ago and it's only just come back yesterday. Um, Penny says I sound like Phil Mitchell now, which is, I don't know if that's a compliment or not really, you've got to watch her because she's gunning like that. Anyway. What Phil Mitchell's a twat, like notoriously in the story he's a twat. <laughs> yeah, about right really. <laughs> what I want to show you today is something <laughs> that I've bought, which I think is a really cool toy. Um, I can't do any fabrication today because I've got to work in three hours time and I've got to get this video up online for Wednesday's upload. Um, we've... Why? Why? If you're ill, don't do a fucking video. Why? 
I've got to. We've got a pretty punishing schedule this week. It's Christmas week. Well, it's approaching Christmas week now, as you know. If you look at the date, if you... It's Christmas week. No, actually, it's approaching Christmas week. This week is approaching Christmas week. If it's after Christmas, look at the date underneath. Um, <clears throat> we've got... Actually, when was this released? Just so we can have a laugh, because it probably is Christmas Day or something. 21st of December. It is Christmas week. What? It actually is Christmas week. Three videos in a row to make. I'm going to make this one today and get it up uh, because I've got to do something to the bike today that's extremely important that I've been putting off for a long time and this new tool is going to be useful for that. Tomorrow I've got to make a patron's video and Friday I have to make the video for Saturday's upload for the weekend. And the reason for that is that Saturday itself I can't afford to be in the garage here because it's Christmas Eve. Penny's got a store, as you know, she's got a jewellery business. And I have to be there to help her. It's the busiest day of the year first, so I've got to spend the day there. So I haven't got the chance to be in the garage on Saturday. So I've got to make Saturday's video on Friday. So oh. these next three days... We'll... You poor little lamb. Maybe get ahead of yourself and release these videos. I don't know why this matters. Can we get to actually what you're fucking doing? Uh, oh, no, he's coming. Making and producing. Finally three videos in a row so it's pretty punishing roughly 12 15 hours a day um 12 15 hours a day it's wednesday right now yesterday tuesday right so yesterday's tuesday the day before monday <laughs> so it's wednesday so it's wednesday so 20 21st is wednesday 22nd 23rd 24th 25th so yeah she said saturday's Christmas Eve. So this is Christmas week. I was thinking if Christmas Day was on Tuesday the following week, then you'd call that the week that Christmas is in. But no, this is Christmas week. The end day before Monday. Christmas Day is at the end of it. Christmas Eve is on the Saturday of this week. Fucking hell. I did two 15-hour shifts in a row to get my weekly hours up. Because uh, I do a semi-part-time job now, 30 hours a week. Uh, so I've really honestly taken care of business this week. Semi part time, he does 13 hours a week. God, so basically, just he what does he do? Which is whatever, but what I'm saying is, is if he's doing semi part time, right? Because in this country, 16 hours is regarded as part time, uh, like the minimum part time. So, yeah, if you're doing 13, you're doing less than that. But what's his did he he said 13, I'm sure he said 13. Because he said semi part time, so if he's doing thirteen hours a week at work, which is fucking two days, what does he do all the other time? What I'm saying is, is this: he has the time clearly to do this bike properly, like properly, properly. It's got nothing to do with time, obviously. It's extremely punishing. Enough of that, anyway. Oh, he's saving orphans. I completely forgot. Oh, and he's also meeting up with his mates from 3Para. <laughs> uh, that's good fun. Let me just get that camera right. right there we go. <clears throat> Honestly, excuse me. So, right, I wanted to show you this, first of all. Um, I bought this little gadget the other day. I just couldn't resist it. I've seen other people using them, and I really wanted one. It's an infrared thermometer. You've never seen them. Looks a bit like a taser. Um, I don't know how many tasers you've ever seen. Uh, number two is is that they're cheap as fuck. Maybe he's on the breadline because he works 13 hours a week. Why don't you go back to work properly and earn some fucking money? Like, you know, it's no secret. He's told everyone publicly on a bloody TV spot that he's a bus driver. But if you're a bus driver and you're working, uh, working 13 hours a week... He could have said 30, but he said semi-part-time. 13 hours a week as a bus driver. You're not earning that much money, are you? Obviously, it's Penny's business holding everything up while you fucking dick around saving orphans or meeting up with your two paramates. Or one para. Whatever, para. <laughs> Just a sec. Here we are. That's a regular <laughs> thermometer, as you know. If you see the... Th uh... My mate David's in, in two para. He uh, 
yeah, he, he can't he can't wait to start reminiscing about good old um, well, all, all of the stuff related to uh, jumping and static lines and altimeters and all this other stuff he was going on about. He can't wait. The temperature in here is about twelve degrees. Looking at that, that's centigrade. This infrared thermometer works in a different way. Excuse me. <coughs> Did he say how a normal thermometer works? As you know, if you see the, th the temperature in here is about 12 degrees. Right. Looking at that, that's centigrade. This infrared thermometer works in a different way. Excuse me. How does it work? <coughs> because a normal thermometer, like a liquid thermometer like that, basically works on the expansion. It's, it, you know what's really fucking funny? A lot of the time, thermometers like that, modern day thermometers, it's a lot of the time it's propylene glycol that's been dyed, right? And it basically expands. <laughs> you make a thin enough tube, it expands, and it goes up a tube. And what they do is they say, right, at 100 degrees it's there, at zero degrees it's there, and then we just increment it all up. Although it expands up there because it has a, 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 a very a quite stable um, expand. Uh, uh, coefficient of thermal, thermal expansion, right? It's quite stable, so it just goes up incremental like that, and then they can just mark it off. And it's a, it's about right, but it's weird that it doesn't need an expander tank because expansion tank because um, Evans doesn't expand. Although literally the thermometer that he's got is basically Evans, and it expands. <laughs> I might even get one. I've got one. Uh, it's up there. I've got one, but I might crack it open. Pour the shit out. I'll get another one. I'll just get another one. Pour it out. Wash it out with, like, like xylene or something. And then we'll get the Evans, because it is red. And we'll pour it in and <laughs> see how well it works. That's an excellent idea as a thermometer. <laughs> I think most of them are. I think that's right. Let's go and check. Let's go and check. I'm probably talking shite, but it's either propylene or ethylene glycol. I think it's it's propylene because they're, they're bothered about toxicity. Um, thermometer or a thermometer. Um, that's a mercury one. You could always tell because they were full of mercury. Um, an alcohol thermometer. Maybe it's that, but let me have a check. Comparison of the scale. Thermal radiation. Materials. There we are. So. Right, oh. Specific heat at constant volume. Learnt heat of expansion at constant temperature. Constant volume thermometers. Oh. Accuracy. Oh, so the uh, alcohol ones. These ones. What is it? Oh, so the liquids that could be used are ethanol, toluene, kerosene... Also, it's not, depending on the working range. Since these are transparent liquids, are usually added over dye. Oh, I thought it was actually glycols. We'll see how well it works, regardless. Someone's been lying to me. Um, are you sure it doesn't work like that? I know, I believe it. Kerosene, toluene. We've got toluene and ethanol. I've got all of these things. Can you use propylene glycol? Propylene. How do you spell it? Propylene glycol thermometer. Is that a thing? These are all sponsored. Glycol encased. The important use of glycol encased temperature probes. Maybe that's something different. Or maybe I could be. Maybe it's thermometers that are for different temperatures. Like it did say 
for freezers. Because obviously it doesn't freeze. Then send alcohol is usually done. Refriger uh, freezer glycol filled. Th I I knew the but yeah, propylene glycol filled tube simulates food temperatures more accurate and stable readings. Not affected by changes in ambient temperature. Minus 20 to 15. Yes, so the literate right. So that's where I've got it from. I knew I heard or read or someone told me something about thermometers with propylene glycol in. But they're specific for something, right? Cool. Okay. But still, we can see if we can make a thermometer out of. Because I can melt the end. Like, we could put it in and I can melt the end and seal it and put it back on the on the thing. It's up there staring at me. Well, fuck it, we'll use that one. Um... But it'd be easy to wash out, surely. We'll see if it burns as well. We'll see if that burns. It'll be it's, it's toluene, kerosene, or whatever alcohol it'll burn. Obviously, this is old work. Um, now, this works in a different way. What it does, it measures the surface of things, the surface temperature. Not no, I don't think it does. It's emiss it's emiss em emissions. How do I uh, thermometers work? Employs a lens to focus the infrared light emitted from an object onto a detector known as a thermo pile. A thermo pile. There's nothing more but a th thermo couples connected in series or parallel. Um, because that's the thing. It doesn't measure the temperature because you can fool them. That's the, that's the whole thing. It's the radiation that's coming off it. Every object is not absolute zero, blah, blah, blah. Similar to visible light, also focuses, absorbs infrared light. Employs a lens to focus, because it's got a focal range. If you look at them... I'm sure I have one kicking around somewhere. Where did that bugger go? Because it doesn't work. I was fucking around with it. Gee, only Jesus knows where it's gone. Um, no, 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 it's gone. But any road, it's got a focal range on it, and if you look at them, they have a, a like a chart where it shows you circles. It's uh, instructions. We'll just put that. There'll be a picture somewhere. They're usually on the side of them, and it shows you a cone. Because a lot of people learn how to use these properly because of COVID, weirdly enough. Where's the corn picture? Oh, it's, it's it's on the side there. It's usually a series of corns. What the hell is that? No, no, I don't do that. There. Oh, you're going to be able to see that very well. It's there. It's like a, a, a section of corns. And I can't remember what it tells you. I think it's there. Right. Can we Can we visit that? Just a moment. Just a moment, please. So, we'll have Zoom here. Zoom, 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 zoom. Master of the Zoom. Go away. With this shit. I can't see what that says. Can't, can't I master of Zoom this? What the fuck? Warning, do not point laser directly in the eyes. Um... I wish we could zoom in. I don't think this zoom is going to work. No, that zoom is not going to. That, that zoom is not helping really. Oh yeah, it is. It is. Master of zoom. <laughs> Fuck it up. How do we move across? There we go. So, ah, oh, it's not going across the page. Oh, for fuck's sake. There, that'll do. So, it says 38 millimetres something, 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 something. Fuck knows what all this is. <laughs> Laser radiation, do not stare into... The... Right, so is it basically saying at each distance it's gathering a bigger region? So if you go close, it's going to be a small region, small region. When you go further away, it's going to basically measure the temperature of a bigger area. So I think that's what it's saying. It's saying the size of the diameter of the spot... At 38 millimetres away, it's whatever. And it's got a, a, a distance to spot size of 16 to 1. Probably even tells you. 
Make sure the target is larger than the unit spot size. The smaller the target, the closer the measuring distance. When accuracy is critical, make sure the target is at least twice as large as the spot size. Most organic materials of painted oxide surfaces have an emissivity of 0 0.95. Inaccurate readings will result from measuring shiny or polished metal surfaces. To compensate, cover the surface to be measured with masking tape or flat black paint. He's got loads of that. Measure the tape or painted surface when the tape or painted reaches the same temperature as the material underneath. This is why they're only good for measuring humans. They're not good for high temperatures because you can't put tape on, you can't put tape on people uh, on on hot things. All right, here we go. This is better and better. See, look, this is yeah, like five to ten centimeters away because of spot size, and it's saying your accuracy. All right, at 32 degrees to 42.2. .2. Oh, it's measuring. Accuracy is 0.3C, give or take. Uh, does it have... It doesn't have the picture, because this is literally just for pointing at people's heads. It looks like a fucking phaser out of Star Trek. Um, it's for measuring body temperatures up to 60, you see. Not really anything more than that, because... Well, it's just not. Um, the, the you know they're okay. They're okay. Mercury free. What? Well, well, it's because because it's a thermometer. People think it's got mercury. In it. That's quite funny. Oh shit! Right, let's hear the Dell tell us. The air temperature. So if you fire it at something, that will tell you that my hand is thirty degrees. Right. If I fire it at the wall over there, yeah. that's about eight degrees. So the surface temperature of the the concrete floor, the concrete walls, the steel on the bikes, the toolbox, the, even the wooden bench is about seven or eight degrees. So what you want to do to test this theory, right, just to make sure you're not fucking dicking around, and that you, you're going to base your what readings, you're going to base what you're going to say on this. Go around the room. This room has been sat here, just say, overnight, and... Everything's cooled down slowly over time. It's all in equilibrium about. Then you go around and zap everything. Go and zap something shiny. And then it goes, dit, dit, and says 35. You're like, whoa, hang about. That's not 35. When the thing next to it's 8. You know what I mean? So you can go around testing things. Whereas the air temperature in here is 12 degrees. It's a very different thing. No. Well, no, because the air temperature can change quite quickly. Like, you can turn a heater on and then put that thermometer in front of the heater and it'll go up, 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 up. But you go and touch the walls or you go and measure the walls. The walls aren't going to heat up because they've got a lot more thermal mass. So this is the problem with heat and, and this is the problem with heat and temperature. It's all about energy, right? And temperature, it's it's, it's a bad explanation. Oh, sorry, sorry, it's stupid him saying that the air, that he's, he's almost like he's saying that the thermometer and the gun... Um, this thermometer is more accurate. Wait, no, you're measuring two different things. You know, I've had loads of fun playing with this. It was only eight pounds on eBay. I just thought I'd have a bit of fun with it because I thought of an amazing. It even says that you can even see the cone thing on the side. It was only eight pounds on eBay. You can see it there. I just thought I'd have a bit of fun with it because I thought of an amazing test that I could use for this, which really will dispel an enormous hysteria of myth that came up about the belly pen. So now I've been looking, skimming through the comments looking for some gems, right? And I found no one who's been talking about the belly pan thing. I found one. That's it. I'll show you what I'm going to do. And he was just asking the question. I'll the bike up and show you what I mean. <clears throat> Welcome back. <laughs> Now you remember this, um, when we were, when I was making the belly pan, there was an absolutely hysterical response to it being over hot inside. And the Didn't find it. It's probably deleted. It needs ventilation. The conversations that we had with you all about ventilating the belly pan just went on and on and on and on. It didn't stop. People were literally panicking. This thing was just going to catch fire and burn out. I don't believe you. One, I haven't seen it, but number two is catch fire. 
The exhausts are made out of the same material this shit thing is. How is it going to catch fire, you div? So what I thought I'd do is use this today to measure the temperature of the surface. All that should matter is actually there, is because that's the one that's closest. And I bet he measures the exhaust, which is shiny. Of the belly fan, which is currently 10 degrees, with the engine running. Um, so I'm gonna... See, the wall said it was 8, this says it was 10, the air says it was 20. Eh, it's got a lot less thermal mass, maybe. We'll run the motor up. Because it has been sat there for ages. It hasn't been run for something like six months, I think, well, since we started the project. Those of you who remember when I first started this, <clears throat> honestly. No, I can tell you when it wasn't right at the beginning in February. It was in 8th, 30th of April, because you did it because of your stupid Evans bullshit. Excuse me. When you put the exhaust on. <clears throat> when I first started the project, I ran the, I, I took the fuel tank off and I ran the hose down and I emptied the float bowls. So there's no fuel in the system at all. Now, it's come winter time now, so at night time it gets to about two degrees in here and it's all metal and stone. So that cold followed by then I come in during the day to work and I put the heater on and it gets up to, the air temperature gets up to perhaps sort of 20 degrees uh, and the metal temperatures are getting up to about 10 or 15. And that obviously has an, the, the effect of possible condensation. And <clears throat> the conversation, the condensation I'm talking about is the damaging stuff inside the engine. When oh. the engine's got air inside it, if that air is in any way moist, as soon as you get a hot, cold transition, you get water forming, water droplets. And if that forms on stuff like the camshafts, it's very important. It will still happen no matter what you do, but it's very important if there's a coating of oil over those parts, it won't have any effect. It will just wash away when you fire it up again. So because this engine has been stood still and motionless, it hasn't turned over for four or five months, it really should do just to pump the oil up to the top, get, <clears throat> excuse me, get everything up to work in temperature so that everything settles right down again. I want to get the fan kicking in. I haven't actually... Why does that make it... You haven't solved... You just described an issue and then you just said, well, fuck, we're going to start it. All right. Tested whether the fan kicks in or not. It's got the Evans waterless coolant in it, which, again, we haven't tested up to work in temperature. Well, I have, but only the once. And it was kicking a little oh. bit. This is, this is something he endorsed, but he's never used it before. <laughs> Good on you, Dell. Of excess fluid out of the pipe. I knew it does that, so I want to see if it does it again. It's... Why would there be excess fluid? Is it because it's expanding? It'd be good if you had a bottle to catch all that. <laughs> kicked out probably about an egg cup full of fluid from full. I want to see if it kicks out any more. But how hot did it get? Because uh, it's stopped. Is it a hot day? No, it's, if we can tell, he's told us it's 12 degrees. That's fucking cold. Kicking it out. Cold versus 30 degree days, sat in traffic with the engine. Once he got to a point. Um, so I guess the levels dropped a bit. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now. I hope that doesn't bubble out and burn you, you div. Is I'm going to put some fuel in this, drop it off the bench, uh, well, drop it down, put some fuel in it, fire it up. Um, I'm not going to put fuel into the fuel tank <clears throat> because the bike's going to stay off the road uh, until it's finished and the fuel tank will be painted in the future. Uh, I don't want fuel in there going stale. At the moment, the petrol tank is bone dry and it's got a layer of WD-40 around the inside of it so it won't rust. So I don't want to go putting fuel in that and have to do it all again. So I'm going to use uh, just a header tank method with a funnel just in order to get that done. All right, so I'm going to drop this down, fire up the engine, get this up to work in temperature and see for real just exactly how hot this gets. Remember, we've got paint on this, we've got filler all around the inside lip, we've got filler on this. Is it all going to blister and burn? Is it going to melt? Is it going to catch fire? Or is it just going to get warm? We don't know. You're going to see as I do. So let's get some fuel. That's it, take that shit off. And that shit off. So, just pop a funnel in there. I'm just making a header tank. Like a... This, this header tank, what the fuck are you talking about? This isn't dangerous. 
<laughs> you not got a fuel bottle you can hang up? It's like an IV drip. For fuck's sake. Okay, now. Very small. Very sort of makeshift um, fuel tank, just for the sake of this exercise. I'm just going to take that around there. The electrical tape will stop the fuel leaking oh, out this joint oh, right. for a short period. Certainly long enough to do this. So it doesn't matter. There we are. Right. <clears throat> so I can now fill this up with petrol. It won't leak anywhere and it will feed the engine for the, for the duration of what is going to be about uh, probably a 15 minute test uh, just to run it up, get it right up to temperature. So let's get some fuel out on the other bikes. Oh my god. And there we go. It starts a bit siphon. Just need about half a pint. So if you siphon in fuel, you can use that vacuum method. Or you can just use a proper siphon in the first place anyway. I could be a man and just get a gobful. <laughs> Cancer! Okay, um, now for the purpose of this, baffle in, and the only reason I'm keeping the baffle in, it won't ride with the baffle in normally, but I'm leaving it in just to give a little bit of back pressure uh, until I know exactly whether it's running perfectly or not. Dell, it's because your neighbours, because there's a bloke up the road called Alan who wants to kick the fuck out of you. It does run perfectly with it in, so that's no issues. Um, we've got our makeshift header tank all done. I mean, that is really Heath Robinson, but it is safe. <laughs> Uh, dude, if it falls, if you knock it, if the tape comes off when you're not looking because you're revving 45 minutes and this just spills over. We saw that guy's channel when he was fucking around and buff. And you're doing a hot test here. It's just like, uh, well, uh, whatever, whatever you want. Because all this is taped up nice and solid, nothing's going to leak, that's secure, and it's just going to oh, run up sat here. Uh, the worst I might do. Just run it over by the door as it starts warming up. But the first thing I've got to do... Oh, so you're going to move it with that funnel full of fuel? Fucking retard. It's just asking for it. How he isn't dead, I don't know. Let's get the fuel in, uh, prime through probably about, I don't know, 60, 70 mils to fill all the... I think it's 10 mils in each... I'm not quite sure exactly, in each bowl. Uh, so to get them all filled up. What, 10 millilitres? <laughs> Fucking hell! Before it will start dragging any fuel. Well, like, fucking, like, what is it would be in a fuel bowl? 20cc? 10cc? Something like that? 10cc? Fucking milliliters. Fuel into the motor and fire. So let's get it fired up. It's been a long time. So it took almost quarter of a pint. I don't know what pints are. I don't know what pints are to milliliters. Pint to milliliter is fucking hell. So it's just over half a litre is a pint. So if it's that, what did he say? Just over half a pint. So we'll call that what? 250. 250. I can't think. 70 is 10, that's 260. So 260 would be quarter. Then you divide that by four. 65, really? It's also the pipes as well. 65 cc per carb. A uh, milliliter, sorry. So 6.5. Oh, yes, yeah, 6.5 cc. So I said, what, 10? It's better than 10 milliliters, he said. It was... Dude, you're tipping fuel everywhere. You've got a jug full of fuel. You fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if it starts. Can you get your key? Easy. Easy. You gotta remember, he's a lefty, right? He's a lefty and he couldn't do that. Let's see if it starts. It's been a long time. That was easy. Six months. What are you doing? That's that bone dry. It's not bone dry, the cab still have fuel in it. You didn't <laughs> Unbelievable. Why is that unbelievable? It had fuel left in it from before. Honestly, this has not been started for something like five or six months. I don't believe you. 
and just prime it with fuel and it just fired straight off. I don't believe him. I reckon that was all of the little shrine. That is incredible. Drunk all that fuel. It's a shame we can't see. He drank all that fuel, did it? It's just so full of shite, isn't it? Things looking at everywhere. Can't see. Whoop, there's a cut there. Let's see if it starts. And a cut there. I reckon he's already started it. It's a shame we can't see anything else. I want to know because. It's been a long I time. I can't see any lights there. I did hear a click there. Six months bone dry. Unbelievable. Honestly. This has not been started for something like When he says honestly, he's like five or six months. And just prime it with fuel and it just fired straight off. That is incredible. Drunk all that fuel for sure. Amazing. Unbelievable. It's just cold, that's all. He's a mo he's a fucking mong every time. Leave it alone, let it warm up. As soon as you open the taps, air, buff, dead. So he's literally got that funnel, he's going to go down this ramp around these bikes and back out the fuck. <laughs> Leaning over like that is how you drop a bike. I've seen loads of people do it. See how he's just squeezed through there? This. There. Right, he's got to get his little scrawny little woman ass through there, which he's fine with. That bike's almost upright. It's just a bit cantered towards him. As he leans over, this is how people drop bikes. Because he's doing that, he's lent right. Up. He's lucky he didn't drop it, spill this everywhere, and set himself on. What the fuck is it? Has it dropped? A, it's dropped one of its um, overflow hoses. You probably don't even know. Just bung it in there. It's that baffled jumping around because tech can't make parts. That He's just had a quick look. That Alan guy is is at work. Thank fuck for that. Otherwise, I'd be coming around batting the fuck out of him. Look at this. This is. It's just you just blank it off. See, we didn't see any of this. He just blanked it off. Fuck it. Is that the carb heater? Cool. That's quite reflective. I can hear the fire. Up to working temperatures, not what it means. All it means is the fans come on, as in it's getting tired. Right, so at this moment, you want to look at the entire engine, right? Because the whole thing is still a heatsink. The frame will have to warm up a bit. You'd have to leave it here for a good half an hour to do a test. Because it's a cold day, right? Because it's 10 degrees or 8 degrees outside or whatever it is. Because you got to remember, it's inside. If the walls are 8 degrees, I reckon outside it's probably about 5 because there's a bit of wind, right? So it is going to suck the heat out of that engine, right? The air is going to that is going to fucking convection and all the rest. It's going to just suck that heat away on a cold day. This is why you know you'll never ever ever get five bars on your you know during winter time. 
my fan will never come on, ever. Because if I'm moving, I'm fine. If I'm sat there in the traffic for a bit, it's just too cold. It just eeks, the, just eeks it away. So why not do it on a flat surface and come perpendicular to it? That could be measuring fucking all sorts. It could big spotlight. So you're getting tired. Of it's a curved surface as well, which means the light's going to scatter out. But it is, it's just, it's not the laser, it's literally what it's absorbing from there. But it's still a big area. Go right up to it, like they do with the fucking things that they point at your forehead, like a gun. Because if you look, what, his, his exhaust is warmer further down? No. It said 144 there. Oh, you reckon that... Touch that pipe with the back of your knuckles and tell me if that's 60. Now, there you go. There's your proof. It's 25 degrees. Right, which means it's not everywhere else, so it is transferring to this. See, what he needs is a timer so we can see how long he's been running it. Now, who has ever burnt their hands as a kid on an exhaust? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, you, I remember. Oh, fuck me, I remember. My dad went out on his... Uh, it was an X-Up. I'm sure it was. Or it was a GPZ-1100. as a little kid. And he went out on it. Summer's Day, he came back, racing around with his mates. And it was making that clicking noise. Ting, 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 as everything contracts. And I saw the exhaust, and I saw the colour of it. And I went, oh, like that. And I touched it, and I left my fingerprints on it. No, at 17 degrees I didn't. So, this isn't warm enough. Right? This isn't warm enough. And it's cooling it down too quickly. Or he's getting a shit reading. Because it's shiny as fuck. So you don't actually know which one it is. But if you're touching that, that means it's not warm. I have the bit on the Z900 where that pipe comes out, right? It will melt. When it was a full exhaust, when it was the full Z900 exhaust, let's see if we can find a picture of it, actually. There's probably someone who's got Z900 boots uh, melting on exhaust. There's got to be a picture of someone's boots melting on the exhaust. Look, look, see this, this guy here. See how his boot is melting on the exhaust, whatever this is, right? It's not that hot, though. It's, it's so warm, it's so cool, you can grab it. See, look, some people there, look, Z900, he's burning his heat, I bet you, he's burning his heel on that exhaust. It's exactly what happened to me, I burned my boot away. Look there, bits of pla bits of boot, <laughs> Uh, loads of people have done it. Loads of people have done it. Exhaust melting my boot. Kawasaki ZX6. Right, loads of people do it. Loads and loads and loads of people do it. Uh, 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 uh. It's just about exhaust placement and how big your feet are. Right, it's just shit, shit placement basically. But obviously, all the Harley boys do it. They all always end up burning their legs and all sorts of shite. But I have put Z900. If you put boot melting on exhaust, right, there'll be loads of people. Oh, this is some guy on a dirt bike. Look, who's probably melting the inside of his leg or the top of his boots. So you're telling me these don't get hot enough? You can just touch them. Look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't touch that, do you? Now, don't get me wrong, not everyone's exhaust does this, right? But they can get hot enough, quite easily get hot enough. Why do you think 
his his exhaust, his stupid bloody uh, XE has this heat shield on. Why did he replace the heat shield? Look at that. Look at this. This is on the um. Oh, for fuck's sake, on the Ducati. That's on the Ducati. Ducati, whatever it's called, that stupid thing. What's this one? Go away, are we all these stupid fucking rubbish? Oh, that's going to take forever to load. Load that one instead. Look at that. Look, it's just, it's just blown his exhaust. It's just blown his... <laughs> ah, yes, look at that. My brand new, brand new fucking boots look buff. Fuck off. It's just the way it goes. Now they're not hot enough. Now I know that was the exhaust. That's literally the outgassing. But you can. It's 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 a thing, right? If people don't think it's a thing, you haven't been riding your boot long enough. Yeah. So he's been burning it, sat on top of the exhaust. Look, you can see where it's melted. It's not near here. It's on top of. See his foot there. His foot peg. His top of his heel sits there. You can see it's been burning. So, shit test. Poor test. Fuck off. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's the coolant temperature. It hasn't migrated all the way down everywhere. You could have put a bit of tape on your... on Just put a bit of yellow, that yellow marker that I've got, or white or whatever, on the end of your fan blade so you can see it's spinning. If you're that, he's obviously that bothered. Don't put it on the fins. Put it there, right next to it. Puff. <laughs> what, you're telling me that your exhaust there is 70 degrees? Touch you the back of your head. I've noticed as well, he's, he's pulling the gun a lot further back in some points than other ones is other. Because I want to show you how hot it is, I'll do close. If I want to show you this, I'll go, it's like, hmm. It's easy to test this. It's easy to test this. I can just get a bit of metal and put it near my exhaust and just leave it running for a fucking hour, an hour. I want to see you. Uh, I want to see you touch the uh, the tail again. The end. The back end. If you think that your headers are only 130 degrees, then you've got a dodgy measurement. <laughs> oh, sorry. Was that a, was that the collector? Sorry. Yeah, it is. Yeah, all right, cool. Yeah, exactly. So, how is that a hundred and something, and your can is seventeen? <laughs> so that's the collector area, the collector, and you go a bit further up, it drops to seventeen. Wow, that's an awesome heat exchanger. Where do I get one of them? It's so cold you can see his breath. So go on the engine case. Do it perpendicular, you tit. Put it practically next to it. It's a good one, though. Is that oil leaking out of there? Or is that just a reflection? Uh, it's 72 degrees on the cases. They get a lot hotter than that. Yeah, it's hot, isn't it? 
I've now took the last one. Now, now measure it. Now, I want to see you measure it now. Now measure That key's not... Now measure it. You see, have you heard the fan going for it? Why is it doing that? God, I nearly knocked it off. That's a safety bar for those who don't know what it is. If it does collapse, it will hit that and stop. All right. <clears throat> so what have we proved? <clears throat> Nothing. We've proved categorically. No, no, no. You see, this is the thing. This is the thing, right? You could step back now and say... I don't know if I'm using this heat gun properly. Let me read the instructions. Should have done this in the, in the first place. Um, and then he should say, from just doing that, but it's a cold day, and I didn't really run it long enough because I ran out of fuel. But instead he says categorically... That <clears throat> this belly pan doesn't get hot. And I'm as surprised as you might be. Um, I honestly thought that pipe right there even at this point, this has been switched off now for five minutes. That's still 42, 43 centigrade. It was oh, running at about... No, it's not. Fucking touch it. Touch it! I, bet you, I, I want him right now. Touch it. Got that? Yes, fine! <laughs> 69, 70 centigrade while the engine's running. Are you fucking on crack? No, it's not. The top of the header was running at 150. The collector, where the gases are forced into one under pressure, <clears throat> they were running at about 150 as well. But one of the other questions asked was, is this tailpipe going to burn the, my, the sole of my boot? Well, not if it doesn't burn the back of my hand, is it? You know, I really... Is it? What, brav? Is it, fucking wanker? I, I'm so pleased with the results, I can't say it enough. You've done it on a, a day where it's fucking like five degrees outside. Fuck off. Um, the radiator. It'd be like me doing an Evans test today, and it's fucking well, it's twenty in here, but it's eight degrees. It's eight degrees outside. Well, I don't know. let's find out how hot is it outside. Cold. What are you gonna call it? Where is the weather thing on here? Do they have a weather thing? Today's weather. 12 degrees, it reckons. That's West Yorkshire. I'm not in West Yorkshire. 13, it says right now, but it's going to drop down to 3. It's actually quite nice outside, 13 degrees. Uh, yeah, but it's going to drop down to 3. Whoopi Kai. Yippee Kai, yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> oh no, I pressed the wrong button. Oh no. Oh, it remembered. Ah, oh, KNL. YouTube. Under pressure. YouTube is set up for idiots. <laughs> they were running at about 150 as well. But one of the other questions asked was, is this tailpipe going to burn the, my, the sole of my boot? Yep. Well, not if it doesn't burn the back of my hand, is it? No. You know, I really, I, I'm so pleased at the results, I can't say it enough. Um, the radiator, obviously, even to now, still 60 suits. That's not five minutes, you lie. 62, 63 degrees uh, centigrade. <clears throat> it takes engines ages to cool down. Ages. That was running at about 110 at the peak, which shows that the um, the Evans waterless coolant... It's running at 120, we saw it. ...does run higher than boiling point. Um, so the, the surface temp... So does water. It's, it's under pressure of the radiator was up at 110 so it's 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 chucking out the heat it's effectively uh dispatching the heat out through the matrix 
uh, you heard the, the fan kick in over and over and over again. So this was standing still with no passing air whatsoever in a garage that's ambient temperature is about 12 degrees, which is like it is outside. It's not... No, 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 no. So it's 12, 13 outside. I can't see my breath when I go outside. It's a lot colder than that outside. You said the walls are eight, so I imagine outside with the wind as well, all that shit involved, wind chill and all that shit, that's how it feels. But I reckon it's about six degrees outside. By any means cold or hot, and the surface temperature... Oh, probably eight. ...this glorious belly pan is cool, is cool enough to touch. I mean, the back of your hand on the front, that gets the closest to being uncomfortable, right at this lip. Oh! So it, 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 it is starting to get hot though. Covers the radiator. It's 33 degrees centigrade, which is what? It's about bath water temperature. So it's never, ever going to burn the paint. Not in a million years. Um, what was most surprising... Well, it needs about half an hour. <laughs> ...was here. This outlet tube here, I thought would be untouchable. Might blister the fill around the front. You can put the back of your finger against it. And this one. And of course, these stainless steel tubes are, I would say, that one is maybe two and a half, three mil away from touching that steel pipe. Mm. But there's the fundamental point. <clears throat> it's not touching it. And without touching it, it's not going to conduct heat. That's true. It relies I'll let it on air in between the joint to conduct the heat across. So as one is, so you could take two pieces of metal if you touch them against each other, they'll equalize temperature eventually. If you move them even one millimeter apart, you keep this one hot for a source of power, this one will still go cold. The air in between... Air all right, just like my fire does. You know, like my, my log burner's all the way over there. It's, it's about four, five meters away. You, that, that it, it, it warms me here. It warms that thermometer up, so it says 21 degrees. It's weird, that, though. Because that's metres, that's not millimetres. It's weird. I don't understand. Maybe I'm just fucking stupid. Air does not conduct heat particularly well. Yeah, that's true, but it conducts it well enough. And there's a lot of it's radiation. You go and sit, you go and hover your hand around an exhaust pipe. Just sit, I oh, know it's not round, but you just bear with me. You imagine that's your exhaust pipe. Just hop your hand around like this. Just don't touch it. Just keep it that nice. Like, like, give it, give it, fuck it, give it a 10 mil. Give it 10 mil. See it happens to your hand. Um, <clears throat> moving air has effects like that, but I think... I want oh, you move air and all of a sudden it becomes something. ...to address the enormous um, concern that many of you showed back when we did this. I, I didn't see it, but it, it might be there, or it might have been deleted. Who knows? That it was going to cause problems, and that these vents were essential, um, and it's not going to be cool enough, and it's going to blister the paint, and so on. I think we've proved categorically. I mean, to check the other side as well. I'd actually be more, fuck your stupid belly pan. Even if it was an absolutely wonderful belly pan, I'd be more about the engine overheating. It's, it's got to get rid of the heat. The exhausts are there like that, and these belly pans have holes in the front of them for a reason. Well, it's exactly the same. In fact, the other side is a little bit cooler. Uh, the hottest part of the belly pan, like I said, was the front. Nothing at all down here. Underneath the collector is stone cold. I think because obviously heat rises, and this panel is underneath oh. it. So it's there we are. The engine block at its temperature height was 110 degrees right on the inside mm. between. The it's weird that they put like insulating layers between fuel tanks and engines, isn't it? Strange. The cylinder heads. On the outside here, you saw was about 70. So that little tool, worth uh, eight pounds 66 pence from eBay, has allayed all my fears. <clears throat> and when Mackie comes to do the paintwork, the airbrush paintwork on this, I will have absolutely no fears whatsoever that we can use airbrush paint and standard regular lacquer. But as I said, the point being, well, that's probably fine. I don't even think it'll get that hot. It's just that this this, this test isn't a good test. Oh, sorry, his conclusions. Oh, no, the test isn't good, and his conclusions. Yeah, aren't good. that was another little triumph. I was worried about that myself, too. I really want this pipe here. I love it. It looks like a little GP pipe, and I like that. That's where I want it. Um, it is very close to the foot peg, uh, and it might possibly touch the sole of my boot. Um, maybe this lip edge 
but if I can put the back of my finger against it and it's not uncomfortable, it's not going to do any damage at all. Go and blat over the hills in the middle of summer for a good hour, then come back and then touch it. <laughs> right. Point proven. And you got to remember, that's moving, right? That is clapping on. It's not sat in the car park going... Like that fucking rev bouncing it when just like little twats do you're moving and it's still that hot i think crazy <clears throat> voice almost lost again i'm gonna put all the stuff back on this and drop it down get it ready for the next video <sighs> even when he, he's lost his voice he just talks in a shite incredible really oh right. look at that beauty okay so what have we learned here um if you're gonna run your gone? bike up uh, periodically in the winter then make sure that you don't leave it any longer than about eight weeks two months is absolute oh he has eight months but you don't you don't you don't follow the master follow my advice even though i don't enough because that's when the fuel starts to degrade modern fuel contains benzene benzene contains a tiny percentage of water that's terribly Shit up, damaging yeah. also that fuel just goes horrible and stale and sticky it tends to desiccate it dries out <laughs> sorry oh my god this is just ultimate bullshit oh my god Go for it, Del. Tell us about benzene, carb carbon benzene rings. Jesus. Absolutely enough, because that's when the fuel oh. starts to degrade. Modern oh. fuel contains benzene. Oh. Benzene contains a tiny percentage of water. That's terribly oh. damaging. Also, that fuel just goes horrible and stale and sticky. It tends oh. to desiccate. It dries out, concentrates, and it becomes sticky, and it bungs up all the jets if you've got fuel injection. It sat under the earth for fucking 180 million years. And it desiccated itself, and it turned to sticky. That's how it turns to crude oil. So basically, your petrol's trying to turn back into crude oil. Fuck me. It can be even more damaging to the pump. Um, <clears throat> so two months is maximum. Uh, if you want to, if it's in the tank, you can use a bit of stabiliser, fuel stabiliser, that helps. But again, make sure you... That basically neutralises the benzene. It neutralises the benzene with corrosive acids, the only thing that's corrosive on Earth. ...on the engine at least... 45 minutes like i did just then make sure if you have a fan it kicks in and out a good four or five times to how many you had seven so is your engine broken you're absolutely at working temperature and you hold it at working temperature for at least half an hour what are you talking about that's very important and that will dry any moisture out of the oil <clears throat> the moisture <sighs> will my voice outlast this video questions on a postcard <clears throat> Well, the, stop talking shite, then we might get... The moisture gets into the oil via condensation, so you get the hot gases, the cold steel engine parts. The two don't mix when you start the engine up. That cold steel engine is a bit like when you take a bottle of milk out of the fridge and you put it in a hot kitchen. It just gets frost down the side of it. <clears throat> it's not frost, it's just... This, the... Yeah, all right. Or condensation, and that's yeah. exactly the same thing. You'll get condensation inside your engine on the cold metal parts. It ends up in the oil. So if you want to vapor, and then your, your oil, your oil basically has additives in it to deal with this. And then yes, when you warm your oil up, it evaporates out and fucks back out. Rise that water content out of your oil. Again, it needs to be forty-five minutes. Otherwise, it will just stay there and it will end up with an oily emulsion. When this goes on the road next year, it will get a full oil change and filter and anything else long before it does. So that oil that's in there is not important. It's actually only done a thousand miles, that oil. So it's, it's perfectly fine for the storage purposes. Um, <clears throat> what's next? Right, the next thing is on the belly pan, belly pan, <laughs> on the tail panel at the back. It's all right, you're used to this, stupid. Excuse me. <clears throat> On the tail panel, I've just got to weld up the three holes, which are the filler caps of the original tanks, and then smooth them over. That's a reasonably detailed job. I've got to cut out the lip that remains there, make a little patch panel, circle, patch it in, weld it round, grind it flat, and make a good job of that. Then I can start in the new year to make this section in between to make it a proper seat unit. At the moment, that's just the tail panel on the back. So that's, that's the wire... Um, 
absolutely loads of this wire we had kindly donated loads and loads of it that will make a good job much like i did on the top there wire fiberglass shaping and so on so that's the, that's the next two videos on the tail <clears throat> As I said, tomorrow I've got a video to make and get up. That's a patron's video, so that will just be for those. And on Friday I'm filming again, so my voice should be back, hopefully, a bit better by then. And I can do the welding on that. Patch those panels in. That's it. Now, as Christmas is coming, Penny and I can have Christmas and Boxing Day off. Um, and then, once then that week, Christmas week, we're going to... Oh, I don't need to know about your ins and outs. I don't need to know about all this shit. Hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.